Oh my God, we got the juice today. Ah. What's up, Tabitha? How are you? I'm wonderful. Man, we're going to bring the heat today. We're going to talk about some good things. We want to talk about how to fight right. Yep. We're going to talk about what to do and not to do when arguing. Arguing is inevitable. (laughs) And we're going to talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly because that's what this show is about. That's right. But before we get there, how beautiful are you? Oh, babe. I love you. You are intelligent and you are anointed and fine like wine oh you're funny i'll never get tired of hearing you say that i'm gonna say what you're gonna say to that i don't know i'm like i feel shy so i just well i learned years ago that um uh public displays equal private withdrawals Mm -hmm. come on somebody yeah (laughs) but anyway what's up everybody welcome to doing life with ken and tabitha we are so pumped that you are here if you enjoy this content make sure that you subscribe my team has told me that the button is not up it's actually down so subscribe there you go and if you're a podcaster we love you a bunch of information is in the show notes we do this because we want to build a community of people that just love jesus you know there's so much negativity out there it's important my to invest goodness. into positive spaces absolutely we were just talking on youtube just a minute ago and we saw someone who had just made this whole youtube channel like exp- Exposing this music group and their false this and false like, that. First of all, why did this oh pop God. up on my feed? Because I don't look at <laughs> negative stuff like that. You know? and second are, of all, why is this even created? Why are like, you so angry? <laughs> why does everybody got to be the devil? He's I an always angry elf. I, <laughs> I always wonder about those kind of people. Like, do they have that same energy towards like false religions and like witchcraft and like yeah um, all of the demonic like take that and liquor use it stores against, or, like yeah prostitution like, home, human sex trafficking, trafficking. Like, like don't come at another brother on. and sister but don't get me started there maybe that's another podcast for a different day but we love to hear from you guys so please utilize the comments like i said this is doing life with us we want to share with you the good the bad the ugly the ups and the downs because we've been there and done that mm. we've been in ministry for 20 years lead pastors for 15 years married for 23 years and we are finally figuring out a few things just a little bit we don't know everything but we know a few (laughs) things and we want to share what we do know with our audience all right and so i'm pumped about today because you know my wife she just likes to fight (laughs) she's she is a natural fighter i do like to fight but i I like to fight the good fight of faith yes yes and (laughs) she is not a fighter like an arguer necessarily but she if she thinks she's a boxer Number one, because her dad was a boxer before yes. he died. Yes. And so we've been a part of boxing gyms. Before. Yes. And we have a we have a, a heavy bag in our garage. We have a heavy bag. A, all, do you every hit member it? of the family has boxing gloves. Yeah. I do. It, yeah. It's been a while because I've had some surgeries, but yeah. I do. OK. So but we're not talking about natural fighting today. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, we're going to talk about how to fight right in your marriage, uh, which I guess sorry. some people turn that into a natural fight. Please don't. Yeah. But we want to talk about how to fight right, because here's the deal. You can fight right or you can fight wrong. Right. And I think that fighting is inevitable. And when I say fighting, let's just break it down to disagreements, Mm -hmm. maybe arguments inside of the marriage relationship. Mm -hmm. And we see things differently. I think it's inevitable. And so we got to be okay. Like, okay, we're going to fight, so to say, or we're going to have disagreements. But how do we do it without tearing each other down? How do we do it without... um, uh, belittling one another, mm-hmm. hurting one another, saying things to each other that some words you say you can never take back. Absolutely. You said it. Um, and it doesn't matter how much you apologize, you still said that. And I think that sometimes we allow ourselves to go to heights and levels that we never should as Christians. And so we want to talk about how to fight right. Yep. And, you know, we didn't really have no big plan before we came over. We didn't talk about what we we're going to talk about. But, um, I want to talk about a couple of fights that we've had. I feel like you're trying to make me fight. I feel like no, you're going to no, bring no. me into a fight. Ultimately, I'm not, I'm not going to bring you into a fight. I just want to talk about a few fights that we've had recently, because really we've been married 23 years. Now, the first two years was horrible. Mm-hmm. Um, but over the last 20 years, I cannot say that we've had a lot of fights. Right now. We've had some. Mm-hmm. Now, the biggest one was probably um, in a car mm. and she was driving. Like I would a say out of Hades. most of the fights that we've had uh-huh. that were like fights, like really like explosive uh-huh. have been in the car. Uh-huh. Like we just, yeah. we just well, let me shouldn't tell you how, go there. How this had happened. 
was I was trying to, I was actually trying to prepare for a message. So I'm spiritual and I'm sitting in the passenger seat and we're traveling somewhere far. So I try to ask my wife to do something nice for me and simply drive for a couple of hours. And I'm over here and I'm just working on the message and I just feel the He's car. painting a really I, nice no, listen, picture. I feel the car shaking. I mean, and she's going fast. Now I have told this woman time and time again to please drive the speed limit. I believe that you can outrun your angels, meaning that if there's a speed limit, it's given for a specific purpose. Not that I drive it all the time, but when I'm in the passenger seat, it would be great for you to drive it. My she, angels know the listen, speed that I drive. This woman has a heavy foot and she was driving so fast that the car felt like it was going into warp speed from Star Trek. And I just was like, what are you doing? And then she wanted to be snappy back. And then it turned into this whole thing. And I mean, I don't know what happened. It just turned into this thing. Then you turn into like, I don't know, somebody that I don't know. Uh -huh. Yes. I think what happened, well, let me first say my side of the story. So you're over there, you're on your laptop, you're working and you're doing your thing. But every like few minutes or 10 minutes or so, you would jump up and kind of snap at me like tab. Um, you know, what, tab, or you are, you're riding up too close to yeah, speed. Tab, uh, it's dangerous. you're speeding. Tab, uh, and I'm and I'm in my. I'm like, well, I'm just you thinking, just let me drive. Like, let me drive. Listen, I'm just thinking that no. Well, you have precious cargo. You have my life, your life. People need us. You know, our children need yeah, us. I know yeah. that. But it's like it's like no, uh, were, it's like it's it's, it's so okay, much you're, movement. You're, we're riding. It's a two lane highway, uh -huh. and it's like okay. Sometimes you get people in front of you, and they just go slow. They're just going slow, and I want to pass them up. Mm -hmm. So yes, I'm going to maybe be a little jerky when I go to the side, pass them, speed up because I'm passing them up, mm -hmm. and then I'll get back in the lane and keep on rolling with everybody else. Sometimes, and so we would get into situations like there's big old trucks on the road, and it's like okay, I'm not about to sit here and be behind this truck like all like all day long so i'm going to make a little maneuver i'm going to get out i'm going to speed up so i can pass the truck and i'm going to get back over well and he i don't i'm not telling him this all he does is while i'm in the midst of speeding up to pass up the truck um that's going like below the speed limit then above the speed limit then the speed limit i'm like i can't do this anymore I make the conscious decision to pull over to the side and pass this car up, okay, in the passing lane. And that's when you jump up and you're like, that's it, I can't take it anymore. You're going 10 miles above the speed limit. You're, da, 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 da. And, and I'm like, babe, it's Contrary okay. Contrary, mon frere. And I'm like, no, but it was you, not 10 when we get into arguments, miles okay. above the speed When limit. we get into. It's 90. I don't know what it was. It was 90. Okay. Let's, <laughs> I don't know what it was. let's say, okay, because I'm probably on the highway going 70. Uh -huh. I, go, I, I go 90 miles an hour to try and, and pass up this uh -huh. truck in front of me. We don't need all the details, though. I don't, we, but. We, we don't need all the details, sweetheart. The point is this the point is, is that you have a perspective. And I have exactly. A and your perspective is always wrong. And mine is always right. And that's why people fight is because they think that they're <laughs> always right. And that is the basis of every argument. It really like, is. I think I'm right. You're driving crazy. And, and I think you're I wrong get home to, to this our day. Kids. Right. And it will maybe never be resolved. Yeah. You know, never so be what resolved. are we going to do about it? Now, there are some couples that they will fight for the rest of their life. Mm -hmm. not talk for the rest of their life, mm. divorce because of that right there. Or you can do what I we do and just say, well, it happened. We don't agree. We agree to disagree. Let's move on. Mm -hmm. Right now, I would say that's the biggest fight that yeah. we've probably had. Now, that one ended with us pulling over the car and on the side of the I street. I had to exit. And me taking I over went to driving. The first I exit. No more. Right. Yep. And so, but then after a day goes by, we kind of get ourselves back together. But the point is, is that we're not going to allow that fight um, to necessarily determine the rest of our lives. Right. We have two different perspectives. That's the basis of every fight. All right. Now, we don't have a lot of fights. OK. Over the last 20 years, mm -hmm. um, I could probably I only remember on a handful, maybe five. Do you what are you about you? Um, what, what do you remember? I maybe remember two. OK. I do remember two that was recent, though. 
Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So the other day we were out watching a movie. A That's very, one of the ones I remember because okay, it was so uh, recent. <laughs> a very popular movie. I got two recent ones. Let's talk about it. So um, we're watching this movie and we've, you know, you've been wanting to see this movie forever. So we come out of the movie and I'm like, okay, man, it's a Friday night. It's date night. Let's talk about the movie. And so I want to talk about the movie, but you get a phone uh, message on your text, on, on your phone, a text that says that one of our kids has accessed something on their school iPad uh -huh. that was inappropriate. I don't remember this fight. You don't remember no. this one? Okay. Well, Lord, let me help you. And so, and 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 so, you kind of get a little like in the car. So I'm wanting to talk about the movie, and you're like, "Oh man, Kenny, you know he did this." And look, man, what is he accessing, or is this right, or, or or what's going on? And I was like, "Okay, you know," I was just like, "Okay," letting you talk a little bit, and we keep driving, and um. Uh, then you kind of get a, you, you change the tone in the car from like date night to more like we need to talk. To, we need to have a sit down. And it's almost like I feel this level of responsibility. Like you're wanting me to go in and address this. Oh, will you call like his you go teacher? get your kid? No, the teacher text me. Will you call him tomorrow and settle this? We don't know what's going to find out what it really is. And that was cool and everything. But what I remember is that I pull up in front of the house and it's like you've kind of hijacked the tone of the night. This is the night we're supposed to be chilling, right? And I, I felt like you were just giving me responsibility, telling me to do this, telling me to do that. This is my perspective. And then I pull up the, the truck in the front of the house and I didn't pull it up close enough. So the butt of the truck is over the sidewalk. <laughs> so I get out of the truck. I do not Listen, remember this. I get out of the truck and you say the Man, you need to pull the truck up some. <laughs> and man, I, I got that. so upset. You got mad at oh, me. I turned around and <laughs> I, I threw the keys at you. <gasps> I threw the keys I and I said, you, you park it yourself that. then. Now, I didn't throw it at her to hit her. I threw it to where it hit the grass and you had to go from there. Okay, now, the moral of the story is this. Liz, you were fighting by yourself this day, though. Let me tell you. <laughs> Yeah, you were fighting by yourself because this was not a fight to me. This okay. was you getting upset and you threw the keys. <laughs> was and I was so like, upset. I'm just going to leave him alone. I can't no, believe listen, he threw listen, the keys. Listen, 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 listen. <laughs> All right. But, okay, let, this is the situation now. So you got two choices. And every argument, <laughs> escalate Absolutely. or de-escalate. Yep, yep, yep. Escalate or yep. de-escalate. And what did you do? I de-escalated. She started laughing. She picks the keys off the ground because my pastor used to always say this it takes two fools to fight yes, sir don't be no fool and if you would have escalated and threw the keys back at oh we'd have been fighting it would have been called a police <laughs> ken clater does yeah. not back down it, it, let me tell you oh, oh, oh. Ken talking clater about not, is backing, not down, backing down you should not uh, don't that. you shake you that are the one. at me you're crazy um if she would have escalated, it would have turned into more of a fight. It would have turned into more um, wherever we were going. But what she did is she laughed. And I went into the house. And when I <laughs> when I went into the house, immediately I felt bad. But I decided that was the Lord. I decided to go to sleep anyway. And in the middle of the night, I already knew I needed to apologize. And you know how your flesh is. Your flesh is like, I ain't saying I, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> But I knew that I had to preach and I just refused you see. <laughs> to preach and be upset with you. I refuse. And that's why you need to lead a small group. Do something spiritual. So right. you got to get yourself together so that you can present yourself. And so I was like, you know what? I'm going to just say I'm sorry. I didn't really feel like I needed to say I'm sorry, but I felt like I know. And so I go up to her. She's putting her makeup on. This is first thing in the morning, right out of the bed. I'm going to say that I'm sorry. And I said, sweetheart, I'm sorry. And you say. I forgave you last night already. Aww, There's so many principles that, that we can learn from that, how you de-escalate it. So I was acting a fool mm -hmm. and I was ready to escalate and I was ready Very to funny. go there. Right. But you laughed it off. You de-escalated. You also already forgiven me Absolutely. already. You already wasn't judged. And here's the point to our fight. It lasted 12 hours. Yep. Not, not, not a week, yep. not a month, not three days. 12 hours and then it's so much and this was recent but you don't even remember it yeah I, I that's let what's it go. wrong man people they holding on to yeah. too much it's it's because it's it's not worth it but here's the thing this is why i was able to laugh it off mm -hmm. because that's not you mm -hmm. that's so out of character for you mm -hmm. and that's why i was just like oh my gosh this is kind of funny um but i knew that you were being attacked mm -hmm. what i what i was thinking was wow okay i missed it on that one because there's something that i did mm -hmm. to push a button and to set you off and i feel like when you were trying to 
to talk to me and I was just getting into the kids. Mm -hmm. um, I was so distracted by my world that you were trying to let me into your world. Mm -hmm. You wanted to talk to me. I, I was like, what happened in his day? Mm -hmm. I know he's, you know, doing properties. Mm -hmm. I know he's doing ministry. Mm -hmm. What was said that mm -hmm. I don't know about yet. So that's where my heart was like, okay, this is some, this is out of his character. Mm -hmm. Let me figure out. I prayed for you and I you knew did? that you were going to come on. Yeah. I knew that you're going to come around. And I, I just, as, as a wife, I was wow. just like, okay, check Mark, listen to him a little more. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Don't have him out here throwing keys in the yard. I just took, I know it was your, it's your, you know, your, your reaction, that's uh -huh. that's your responsibility. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you did what you did, mm -hmm. but as a wife, what part did I have to play in it and how could I have prevented this and made it better? So I don't know, it's just- Well, that is an amazing perspective. We've not talked about it, so it's interesting to hear that you prayed for me. Yeah. What was your perspective about that? You just felt like, so you wasn't angry as no, well? I'm sure I, what, I'm what sure was- What were your feelings with it? I'm sure I was probably, honestly, I don't, um, remember like that I, I, I would say I was probably angry I think I was so wrapped up in the kids and what they were doing because right. I've been in this, their world and you know they're like two of them's teenagers one of them's almost a teenager and like I was just so much in my world but that happens but, a lot that yeah. we get into worlds that are different than our world yeah. and we kind of bring that world into this world and let it mess up this world mm -hmm. and I think what I'm hearing you say is that you gave me space yeah. To act funky because that's not the way that I normally am. Yeah. And you didn't hold it as a, oh, that's how you are. It, it mm -hmm. wasn't pointed. It was very loving. It was very graceful. And I felt like I was 100% in the wrong. But I also think what you can learn is to be very self aware. Oh, yeah. You know, um, I, I, you were very self aware of like, what part did I play? Yeah. And I think that if couples can start there, what part did I play? Mm -hmm. You know, and you guys got to forgive all of the sirens. We're in the middle of the city and this just happens in hey. this neighborhood. But, what part did I play? And I think that if we all can, instead of pointing a finger, yep. we have a few fingers pointing back at us yeah. and say, what part did I play? Whether it's a big part or a small part, that's what I hear mm -hmm. you're saying. So yeah, yeah thank you for that. Yeah. But do you know the second one? Because this was recently as well. You remember this. I think I remember the, the one second that, one, but I don't know if I remember all the details behind it. I just know I was upset. It, it seems like these things have come. And typically I'll get a little stressed when I'm under something that's big. It's like a big season about. Yeah. And for you who are in business or you're doing something big just just be very careful in those seasons where something big is about to break off yeah i'm a little more tense and so this yep. happened within about a week of each other and i'm like okay i see what this is mm -hmm. let me just chill out um i don't know i don't know how this one went down uh, i i okay, might remember a little bit okay once so, again the foundation of all every argument is different perspectives yep and yep. so your perspective of this argument is what? So I think it was a Friday, which uh -huh. is our day off. And um, we maybe settled on, did we settle on our property? That's it. That's. We, set, we settled on a house we that we had been property. trying to sell for a while. I'm talking about we settled and we went mm -hmm. to a celebration breakfast. Mm -hmm. Pick celebration breakfast. We're eating breakfast and everything is going well until it was like, well, actually throughout breakfast, Ken kept getting on his phone mm -hmm. and he would just kind of like, I'm sitting there talking and he would just kind of be distracted by his phone. And I would just sit there for a little bit. He'd put the phone down and we kept talking. Mm -hmm. Well, it got to one point where he picked up his phone, but he didn't put it back down. Mm -hmm. And when I looked at him, I looked on his phone and I'm staring at his face for minutes now. And I see him like doing the finger scroll, like how when you're, you know, scrolling through social media. And so I'm thinking, dang, he's on social media. And I really wasn't offended by it, mm. but I made a joke about it. I was just like, oh, you got sucked in, didn't you, babe? Uh, because it wasn't a joke. It I, was a jab. I do it. You know, you uh, get on social media and you start scrolling jazz. and you're like, I'm just like, you pick up your phone. You didn't even pick it up to get on social media, but you uh -huh. find yourself there for minutes. Uh -huh. That's what. I've thought that you did because obviously we're at dinner and I'm staring at your face and you could be talking to me instead of being on the phone. Uh -huh. So I said that mm -hmm. and it was a joke and you took it as a jab, which it was a jab to you, but I didn't mean to jab you. Like it was a sucker punch, but I didn't mean to do that to you. Yeah. Okay. So here's my perspective of the same thing. So I've been working so hard to close this house. Mm -hmm. We finally close it, but I got this other huge deal that I'm working on for the ministry. I got all these different phone calls that are coming in. I'm like, I'm shaking and moving and I'm still Isn't in this work big? mode. I'm still in this work mode. Like we close this house. I got this call coming in and that call coming in. And so um, I'm sitting at breakfast. The food hadn't come yet. So I just decide the, to pick up because I've been waiting on a call from an individual. 
And I'm looking at that. And as I'm doing that, then somehow, you know how your fingers just kind of go over to Instagram. Mm -hmm. I just that's what I I meant. You got sucked in. I I, I went over there, but it was really for a business thing. I wanted to see what my social media manager had posted Mm -hmm. and to see, you know, to make sure that everything was okay. And so I went over there and I felt like as soon as you saw me on social media, you just went off. And, and and when I say went off, I meant that you said something. You uh-huh. you said what you said. What was that statement? Uh, um, you just you, got sucked in, didn't you, babe? Yeah, and it just felt like because we have a rule in our house that nobody can have a cell phone around the dinner table. Now, I didn't agree to the rule. I'm just the guy who pays for everything and covers the family. But somehow there was this rule that was made. And I get the rule. I get the rule that you don't want my 11-year-old and my 13-year-old on gadgets when we're supposed to be talking around the thing. But I'm thinking I'm a grown man doing business deals. I just need five minutes. I got important calls coming in. And I just happen to be on Instagram. And then here she go as the phone police telling me, oh, you just got sucked in, didn't you? And so I think what happened is I was like, no, I didn't get sucked in. Because number one, I hate the rule. I hate the rule. I've never said that before. I, I don't like the rule. Uh, that was new. We we didn't we never talked about that, but we need to talk about the rule because uh-huh. if you don't like it, uh-huh. you know, we can't have a rule around the table with the kids and the kids will be like, "Daddy, your phone, you got your phone at the table." Yeah, you know, they're going to shout you like, out. If I'm on my phone like uh, to me, I know the rule. Uh-huh. And if I'm on my phone, it's because there's something I'm doing more important than your rule. Like I would never be on my phone well, to and the not kids, paying attention. It's not. It's your rule. They're like, "Daddy, you're breaking your rule." It's actually you who set the rule. Yeah, so you are that's the rule what, maker. But we need to take care. We need to address it then, because okay. if you don't agree with it, well, then why do we have it? Yeah, I mean, it's a good rule in principle, but mm-hmm. if I need to break it, I don't want like the the kids and everybody judging me for being on my phone. You know what I mean? Well, but we anyway, do judge you. let's just say this. We do. This talk here went from ground zero to ground a hundred, like, like in. <laughs> Fast. 30 seconds you would think that two people that talk about marriage all the time would know enough <laughs> techniques not to get in the car and keep talking about it and drive down the street Ugh. and keep talking about it and it, it, you know why i was I, I kept saying stuff do you remember what i was saying you i th- no, because at one point i'm not the fighter like i uh-huh. will walk away uh-huh. so if we were at home it would never have gotten to that point because i would have left uh-huh. i'd have been like hey you need time and i need time because once we start our voices start escalating that's a red flag red flag red flag you need a moment go pray uh-huh. go talk to the lord go be by yourself then and, come back and to me that equals you not wanting to talk about it yeah so basically i'm trying to say this is how I feel about mm-hmm. what you just did. Mm-hmm. And you're trying to explain it. But when you're trying to explain it, you're explaining it from a tone that I'm like, well, you're not listening. So I'm going higher. But this is how I feel about it. Mm-hmm. And you feel like I'm not hearing you and you're going here. The second foundation for every argument mm-hmm. is that we're going from step to step to mm-hmm. step until people start throwing stuff because nobody is backing down and mm-hmm. just willing to let you lose the battle so we can win the war yeah i think that's what it is yeah so i'm trying to win this battle right now i want to win this argument i want you to hear what i'm saying because i'm tired of you treating me like this well i think what happens in these situations too and when we're in the midst of it it was like okay me on what a couple of things happen like i was trying to defend myself i was trying to say okay i'm done (laughs) with the argument you win (laughs) let's it okay, I'm sorry. I was, I was trying to be done with it. But even that tone to me at the moment was sounding like, I'm sorry. Like, just leave me alone. Like, right. oh my God, like, I can't stand you. I'm right. sorry. Right. Not like, oh, I'm sorry. I get what you're saying. Right. So I wanted well, to continue to come at you until you realize, like, don't do that no more. Well, that's what I was going to say. Uh-huh. Another another side is that you, I feel like you felt like I wasn't listening and you needed to be heard. Uh-huh. You just wanted to be heard. Like, no, listen to me. This is how you're making me feel. This is what you're doing. So even I was trying to run away and you tracking me down like we're walking to the car here you are Uh but tab i just need to talk about it and i just felt like this and you said this and i'm like look Mm -hmm. i don't care Mm -hmm. you know like talk to the hand we get in the car i can't go anywhere look if i I think it's that that attitude like talk to the hand no i want you to like i felt like you wasn't being humble in that Mm -hmm. moment and listening to what i was saying yeah i you know and maybe i wasn't but Uh i felt like i was i felt like i was uh, I became alarmed and defensive. Uh-huh. And so uh, in my defense, like I said, if I could have walked away mm-hmm. and just been by myself for a moment, I would have collected myself. Mm-hmm. But I have a thing to where like if you if I start to feel alarmed and threatened mm-hmm. for whatever reason, I felt attacked. Mm-hmm. So I felt threatened and I'm just like, get away, get away, get away. So I just shut down. It doesn't matter what you say. Mm-hmm. You could say anything, but I am shut down. I'm not listening right now. Mm-hmm. So it's good that you know that about me because then you won't just keep trying to come tell me stuff. Well, yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, to make a, a long story shorter, so we kind of escalated at the point where I said something and she basically kind of just raised her voice to a level that I hadn't heard in 20 years and basically shifted her body in the car away from me. And when she did that, I heard something that I was like, okay, I've crossed the line. And so then I was like, let me just shut up. And so I knew I crossed the line because and then on the way home, I felt more like remorse. Like if I've ever done anything to my wife to make her use that level of tone and to feel that way and cry, then I've crossed the line. No matter what the point is mm -hmm. I'm trying to make, mm -hmm. no matter how right I think I am. Mm -hmm. And so I felt like. I just don't want to do that, yeah. no, no matter what, you know what I'm saying? So, but this is the sad part that it had to get high, yeah. not like call police high, but it had to get high for me to come to the realization, like, let's just lose this battle or let's just stop that, you mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. And I think so many times we just keep taking, 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 taking steps until something's yeah. broken. Now, mm -hmm. if we go on with the story, um, so you got, we got out of the car probably about 30 minutes later, mm -hmm. I'm just kind of gathering myself. You come we were find silent. me on the balcony about 30 minutes later, and you just say, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. and, um, and we had another appointment to get to, but that start the reconciliation. But I think what I want people to learn from these principles is, number one, we're not perfect. Yeah. Number two, we're real people. Number three is that it always takes two fools to fight. Mm -hmm. Number four is that I'm sorry is one of the, the quickest ways to a resolution. And it takes mature people to say, I'm sorry. And so the first one I said, I'm sorry. This one, you came and said, I'm sorry. And that's the first step to the road of reconciliation. Right. right. And so, and then when you say that, then we're talking now here to where we're literally listening. And I'm explaining these things. I don't like the rule. I feel um, like you're judging me and I'm just trying to do business. Do you know the weight that I have? Do you know the responsibilities I have? And now we're at a place where we can hear. Absolutely. We just want to get there quickly. But the principle is, we probably was in that argument for four or five hours. Mm -hmm. And by nighttime, you could not tell that we even had that. Right. We can barely even remember the specifics of mm -hmm. it because and I need somebody to hear that. You know, there's a part of the agape love of God in First Corinthians 13 that says that the agape love of God doesn't keep an account of suffered wrongs. And sometimes what we do is we go back and we bring out an argument from 10 years ago or 15 years ago, and you just keep bringing up the past into the present, and it's completely destroying your future. You have to come to the place where you let the past be the past. And when somebody says, I'm sorry, I forgive you, yeah. you literally practice the grace of forgetting. I'm not saying that you completely forget, but there's a grace. Um, Paul said it this way that, I look to the things that are in front. I press towards the mark yes. that's in front of me, forgetting the things that are in the past. And I think that that's one thing we do really well. If people say, how have you made it 23 years? Mm -hmm. Well, we're quick to say, I'm sorry. Yep. We're quick very self-aware and we do not let arguments fester beyond that day. You know how the scripture says, don't let the sun go down upon your wrath. Mm -hmm. We don't do it very much. I'm yeah. talking about we're killing it off within 12 to 24 yeah. hours, if that. And like I said in the beginning, we just don't have a lot of that. Yeah. And if you, uh -huh. have, you know, if you have a good argument, you really um, get to know each other um, a lot more. I mean, yeah. like like even after the, the last one, mm -hmm. I feel like closer to you I feel like wow I, I didn't know that about you I'm sorry oh, yeah. I did that and oh, I anytime. feel like I know myself a little bit you know like you just sometimes when you push each other to these boundaries and uh -huh. these limits it's almost like okay you've been through the war together and uh -huh. now you've made it to the other side and yeah. we have something else to celebrate yeah I never thought about leaving I never thought about quitting I never thought about you know trying Not to one time. call you out your name or something like mm -hmm. that it's just like but I think that so many married people don't understand that conflict is a part of every relationship. Yeah. And conflict can actually be a good thing in any organization, in any church. Mm -hmm. We can actually grow together through the conflict. And so we've had our share of conflicts, and there are principles all yeah. throughout it that can really just help our audience today. And so what we want to do is just give you a few keys. Maybe we can't give them all to you today about how to fight right. How to fight how right. How to fight right. Is anybody interested in how to fight right? All right, here's my first one, and mm -hmm. I'll let you unpack it. Let's go. Know when to be quiet and know when to qu keep talking. 
My grandma used to listen to a Kenny Rogers song. <laughs> Is it Kenny Rogers? Yeah, know when to hold up. Know when to hold them. Know when to know fold when up. Know when to fold them. Know when, when to walk, walk away. away. Know, know when, when to run. run. You gotta count your <laughs> You money. never count <laughs> your <laughs> like that, money. You know. I don't know, but money. it reminds me of that. But isn't that true? Um, yeah. I think um, sometimes you just have to shut up. The, the ministry like, of shut up. Be quiet. Don't say anything. Yeah. I mean, and that's like, my, I think the Bible says that a fool, you don't know they're a fool until they open, open their, their mouth. mouth. <laughs> and like, there are so many times a bunch of fools out there. where I can look like the wisest woman in the world, until the wisest mom, mouth. the wisest wife, the wisest friend, just because I shut my mouth. Come on. <laughs> Here's a second one. Don't say things you can't take back. Ooh, and, and that's good, too. I mean, I think that goes into just knowing when to talk and when not to. Mm -hmm. You don't always have to have something to say, like a simple. I didn't know what to say that day on mm -hmm. the porch to you, but I came out and I was just like, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Those aren't the most sophisticated words in the world, but just, you know, a simple I'm sorry. I think words are weapons mm -hmm. and you have to use your words right. Mm -hmm. Life and death is in the power You're of right. the tongue. You're right. And sometimes we say things that cut real deep. Mm -hmm. Like I knew I wish I never married you. I wish I'd have married your brother. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can't take that back. Mm -hmm. It's just um there's certain things. You're just fat and sloppy and you know, um I mean, just there you have to just put some wisdom around I your mean, mouth. sometimes we can be I mean, even as believers, we can be so spiritual in our prayer life and so spiritual at church praying for people and, you mm -hmm. know, all of this stuff, but I think sometimes we can we should be so spiritual in our marriage yeah. and like instead of saying what you see start saying what, what you, you want to see, see. Mm -hmm. start prophesying no you're a man of god yeah. no, you're a woman of god yeah. no we fight for each other in this house this is who we are yeah. and um i think so that'll change everything um be quick to say i'm sorry i think we hit that one already mm -hmm. Um, stop threatening divorce or leaving when things get absolutely tight. i think we we've talked about taking divorce out of our vocabulary mm -hmm. Um, how about this one? Avoid going way back in the day, pulling up old hurts and wounds. Oh. Talked about that one a little bit. Yeah. If you're pulling up old stuff, you haven't healed from it. It's not the other person. Mm -hmm. You have to do that work on yourself to yeah. forgive and move on with your life. What about someone who's been in a marriage that's been unfaithful mm -hmm. and the spouse has been unfaithful and they went through counseling mm -hmm. and they worked it out, mm -hmm. but they still kind of bring it back mm -hmm. up? What, you know? Like, oh, I get it of why you bring it back, but is it helping? Yeah, it's just one of those things. I mean, I yeah. think it's just what I just said. It's uh -huh. it's an inner work, and I mean, nobody blames you. We're so sorry that you experienced that. Well, you that, say, well, I don't trust them. Well, you got to trust God. You yeah. decided to stay in you the relationship. You got to trust God. Now you got to trust God, because mm -hmm. if not, you're going to be the crazy, the crazy spouse. Stalker. Always, yeah. Yeah. Always. All right. Um, don't become self-consumed, Okay. Mm. Um, how to fight right. Don't become. So this is about selfishness. Yeah. And it's about what about me? What about me? What and about I only me? See my way and my perspective. <laughs> hear Joyce and my point of view. What about me? What about, what about me? What about me? me? What about me? What about my education? What about where I want to go to? What about what I want to live? What about yeah. me? What about me? What about me? But marriage is not about, it's not you. about you. It's about us. What about listening? Well, all right. Most people argue trying to get their point across and they react more than respond. Yeah. And the art of listening is huge mm -hmm. when it comes to fighting right. So what I did not do that night is I didn't stop and really try to listen. Mm -hmm. I was really trying to be heard. Mm -hmm. But if I'm trying to listen and you're trying to listen, every argument is brought to nothing. Anything stick out to you on that one? Listening well. No, I, I think that's good. Mm -hmm. Listening not to respond um, or not to give your response yeah. when it's in an argument. It's like, no, listen to hear, like put on their shoes yeah. and hear what they're saying. Here's one. Duct tape certain buttons. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the scripture says to dwell, a man should dwell with his wife according uh -huh. to knowledge. And I learned this years ago that there are certain buttons that I can push in huh. you and you're like, ah. That's funny. You know, I mean, and, like, and people might don't not do that. Don't say that. Yeah. And so my job is to learn your buttons and then duct tape those buttons, meaning that I'm not going to touch it. Yes. You know, and I used to touch them on purpose to get on mm -hmm. your nerves. But if you're going to fight right, there's certain stuff, even in our disagreements, that I'm not going to hit that button. Yeah. You know, if I hit that button, it's on. Ooh, that, I got to duct good. tape the button. I mean, I love the duct tape. We had um, in our last house, mm -hmm. there was a button on our garage um, that there were like three buttons in a row. One turned on the outside light, one turned on the inside light, mm -hmm. and one turned on another light. Well, um, I 
duct tape down the one button that turned on the outside light because it would be on 24 7 so i said i am going to make sure that nobody ever turns this light on again i'm going to duct tape this down mm -hmm. yeah and i think that is some uh, it's a good mental image when it comes to our spouses like no you can make sure that you don't press that button yeah make it that important to you yeah. that you kind of like place a duct tape over it so yeah. that even when you want to, even when they deserve it, you are not going to touch that or button. Or I need to know the things that are really important to you mm -hmm. and make sure that I do those. Ooh, that's good. Vice versa, you know, so it's like a button that I always want to push. Mm. And my last one for today would be never get physical. Never oh, get physical. Yes. And I do believe that um, there are some people who are in relationships and you get so upset that you just want to shake that person or you just want to strangle them or you just want to slap them. And this is both ways nowadays. Absolutely. It's not just a man to a woman thing. Some of y'all ladies, y'all MMA fighters and just, you you know, jujitsu and all kinds of stuff. And it goes back and forth. It's dishonorable. I, yeah, I've seen ladies now getting in guys' faces and telling them, cussing them out and all that kind of stuff. Man, this is so fleshy and so not of, um, uh, so of the world mm -mm. that we just gotta make up our mind. Like, listen, even back in my day when I was a Christian atheist, um, I never put my hands on you. Now, one time I just shook you because I was just so mad in the first it's two funny, years. Funny because I don't even remember that. Yeah, it was not a long shake, but it was just like a. Just, <laughs> it's not funny. Though, yeah, it's not. But it's, it's not just... funny. But I think that that is the lack of maturity and ability to really communicate. Yeah. So you want to take it. Now, there are some people that are just abusive by nature and that's just they, so they want to control you through mm -hmm. abuse and they want to. And then they say, well, I love you. That's why I do know if no, you love you me, don't. you would not put your hands nope. on me. And you've been, you, you know, you've been through abuse in your life and you know yep. what that's like when women have battered women syndrome. And um, I just know this, that the real agape love of God would never get physical. Mm hmm especially in a marriage relationship, but even with another human being. Absolutely. And we have to allow God to give us his peace, his grace, his wisdom, his joy in order so that we don't get the cops called. Praise God. Praise God. So that's all we got for you on today, guys. I hope you enjoyed that because we want you to fight right. That's right. Conflict is inevitable. Arguments <laughs> is inevitable. It is just part of life and we need to normalize it. But we want to give you some tools to help you fight right when it comes. Do not take what we said today like Ken and Tabitha crazy. Let's go and throw keys at each other. That ain't what we're saying at all. We're saying that we don't argue a lot, but when we do, we want to apologize quickly. We want to be self-aware. Absolutely. We want to be humble. We want to tell the we want to reconcile quickly. Hopefully you learned that on today. If you enjoyed today's show, please make sure that you hit the subscribe button so that you can be the first to grab all of the content fresh as it is released. Of course, we release new content every Tuesday and Thursday. This is called Doing Life with Ken and Tabitha. So we would love to do life with you. We would love to hear from you. Um, we have some um, ways to contact us in the show notes. Email us if you have any questions, comments. We love to get feedback from you. If this is good to you, make sure that you leave a review and make sure that you share today's message with somebody that you believe it will be a blessing to. We love you. Thank you so much for tuning in to Doing Life with Ken and Tabitha. Until next time. Peace. peace.